Thank you, Julia. Uh, so just to, before we start off, how many of you have ever worked with a, a creative individual or a creative agency in, in your work? Oh, wow, that's great. Wonderful. So uh, might be able to breeze through some parts. And I, I'd love your, your thoughts as well as we, as we review some, some different relationships on how to, how to work with creatives. Uh, it's interesting, like Julia mentioned, this, this, uh, it's a pretty good marriage between advertising and peace building because uh, we can complement each other well. Advertising loves to make good cause work, uh, partly to validate the fact that we do such evil in the world in some, some cases, uh, but uh, also just because we want a piece of feeling like we're making a difference in the world like you guys are. Uh, but we get criticized for doing it just for the idea and not for the implementation. Um, from my experience on the peace building side, it's often you, there's an amazing strategy and there's an amazing effectiveness and there's an amazing ability to to make boots on the ground effort happen, uh, but perhaps not as much ability to reach a mass audience with a, a compelling idea. And so, working together, we can we can solve uh, solve each other's problems. So, working with Mad Men, I want to talk about an unusual animal which demonstrates a way in which we can, we can uh, work together, the two industries, and that is the hermit crab, which is always, always pitted as the least sociable creature. To be a hermit is, is to be someone who is not sociable, but I want to talk about two fascinating relationships that the hermit crab has, and one is with its fellow hermits. Uh, if you've ever seen this before, it is unbelievable. The, the largest hermit crab will find the, a big new shell to move into, and when he begins to move, all of these smaller hermit crabs will line up in succession as they do a swap. It's like a Airbnb for hermit crabs, so this guy will move in and then they'll just jump in one at a time. Uh, and <laughs> yes, this is a, a BBC piece. It's a yes, I believe so on YouTube. Uh, so that's one relationship, and we'll get back into a second and what what that means. The other one is a very beautiful symbiotic relationship. If you've ever heard of this, this blew my mind. The hermit crab and the sea anemone are perfect partners together. Uh, the sea anemone is perfect at just sitting there and no one wants to touch it because it's got these nemesis on it that it poke and, and, uh, and it's not very delicious. The, but, but it's stuck in one place, it can't go anywhere, and so it's relying on everybody else for its food. The hermit crab is a sitting duck, I guess you could say, uh, for octopus to come in because it's just sitting there in its shell and the octopus will grab it. However, if the hermit crab takes, he, he literally, he goes and he tickles these sea anemone and he gets them to sit on its back or her back and the sea anemone will protect it from an octopus and the octopus won't go after and the sea anemone gets to enjoy all the, gets to travel the world and gets to taste and, and eat all the crumbs from, from what the hermit crab's eating. So this is a, a really beautiful uh, relationship between those two. So this, there are two main ways in which I've seen in my experience in working with, with uh, social good causes, with organizations, that we can work together. And one is proactive and the other is planned. So this first one is proactive. Um, there have been scenarios in which um, well, I'm thinking on something for Keebler cookies, and then suddenly this idea comes on how to influence world peace. Uh, and I will find a, a client, that someone like yourselves, and reach out and, and uh, talk together. And while there's not as much that, that you might be able to do in that space, other than just waiting, hoping an idea would come, one way to go about this is to, to um, proactively reach out to individuals, like Julia saying with this database of Narratives for Peace, reach out to them, but actually not with the intent that you sit together and you come up with an idea in the next couple weeks. That it's rather, hey, advertising people, let this 
simmer in your mind for however long. And at some point, uh, often when your brain isn't thinking on it, some idea will come and they'll, they'll come back and say, hey, I've got this idea finally, let's, let's make it happen. So that's proactive, like you're, you're, taking, uh, you're taking the shell and you're giving it to the, the creative and then the creative gives it back in a different way. And the other is planned. Um, and this is how uh, Julie and I work together on, on uh, different projects, which is you create a brief, which is a, a short document that, that uh, helps, that speaks in a normal language that creatives can understand. And you sit together and you talk about ideas and the creative go off, goes off on his own thing or her own and thinks on ideas and then comes back maybe in a week or two. And then together you, you decide which one you want to do and then you produce that idea together. Um, so those are the, the relationships that I, want to, that I want to talk about on this. Also want to mention from, from my experience, the, when, when I first approach a uh, social good cause or, or an organization comes to me, it's often they've, they've decided that they want to buy a billboard or they want to make a brochure or they want to, maybe even they have a donated TV spot. Um, and while those can potentially be effective, it's often not allowing for, for a big idea, often a big PR idea that everyone can engage with. So it's often a small, uh, smaller thinking as far as marketing goes, and this didn't appear, but a, a big cost. So like buying a TV spot or buying a billboard is, is a big cost for a small organization. Whereas you kind of want the opposite. You want this big, giant, free idea that costs little to nothing. And that's what the ad industry is a uh, is uh, capable of doing. Often, if you look at case studies, it'll say zero media budget or zero production budget, or as a as a proof that the idea was especially effective. Um, so that's where this the evil ad industry can uh, can come into play to be able to help. Oh, this is a shame. This picture is not displaying. I photoshopped uh, Satan's head on uh, <laughs> someone next to uh, Don Draper in a pitch. <laughs> well, that's not there. Uh, no, it's it's a uh, I've been censored, <laughs> but uh, but I want to talk about the less evil ad industry, which is <laughs> uh, if you were to go to an award show like Julie went to, uh, this this is Cannes, which is the largest. It's in uh, Cannes, France, a con, however you want to say it. Um, if you go to an award show, you would be amazed at how many social good causes you've got. Fearless Girl, if you saw, was the the girl who was put in New York. The statue, uh, this is just like, I just searched it on the database, and this is what came up. So uh, Coins of Hope, which is a, uh, helping children, I don't remember that one as much. Refugee Nation, they created a flag for refugees. Uh, this is an anti-gun. Uh, I mean, you can just keep going through. This is a safe driving idea. This is selling Cheetos. Uh, <laughs> this is a, like working together by realizing we have similar DNA. It just goes on and on and on. Uh, so many, and these are these are labeled gold. These are like the most awarded ideas in the industry, and so we are so primed and excited to be able to work on these these kinds of ideas, for the mentions the reasons I mentioned before, and so reaching out and connecting with these individuals in particular who are not only excited about working on it but have a a, a good talent for for executing an idea that everyone will engage with, and that's where. Like Julia mentioned, uh, Narratives for Peace comes in, where you can, you can approach the Narratives for Peace database and uh, present your issue of what you're trying to accomplish. And uh, Julia can connect you with individuals and agencies within the industry who can, who can um, work on it together. Um, so real quick, I want to go through the, the brief. Uh, has anyone written a, a brief for a, a creative team before? Oh, wow, great. So uh, yeah, we'll go through this real quick then. Uh, just from my experience, there's all kinds of ways to, do, to write a brief, but it is important to create a brief as opposed to just a phone conversation um, so that as the creative is ideating, he or she can think, can continue to go back and stay on brief is always the, always the phrase. Uh, first of all, uh, so you've got in your brief, you've got your objective, telling what is success, what your budget and your audience, your timing and reference work. Objective, this is one where we often get into struggles, at least working with uh, creatives, is that 
in your very best effort, you have to take it down to what's the one sentence, what's the elevator pitch, what's the thing that you can say to a four-year-old, uh, which is basically where my mind level is at, and, and uh, be able to understand it. Um, we were working with We earlier this year, and if you, if you go to their site, there's a whole bunch of like high level, let's change the world together. We, if we work together, we can make a difference. Uh, and it, we, were keep, we kept digging down within the website and we never, we never saw like what is the, the bones of, of what it is. And so it, especially with peace building where there is, the, there is much less tangible product to be able to sell, it's really helpful in a brief to, to get into what something that's specific and tangible. Uh, this is often something like we would get as a, an objective, objectively reconceptualized seamless alignments of market positioning. Uh, and that doesn't. I have a, I have a tool that uh, generates like garbly gook like this. <laughs> um, Do you mind if I add just, because I, from our experience, that is by far the hardest part. And yet what I've really uh, appreciated is that actually the creation of the objective sentence together your team and ours. Yeah. It's not because I, I will come up with like what I think is the concise four sentences. They're like, no, no, we really mean one sentence. And they then they will help us kind of narrow it down, narrow it down, ask clarifying questions until I don't feel very satisfied with the final sentence, but they can work with it then. So, you know, I there has been a back and forth. It's not just like we're responsible for the objective sentence. Yeah. And I guess that helps actually to think of it as it's the objective for the creatives, not necessarily the objective of the organization. Yeah. It's what you want to accomplish in that particular particular case. But it is absolutely difficult even for strategists who are writing these all the time within, within the industry. Uh, thank you, that's a great point. Uh, what is success? Obvious one, just specific bullet points on um, you want to get this many email signups or you want to get this many people to share on social media. Uh, something that is that is easier for us to think about what we want to accomplish. Budget. Uh, this one is always tricky working with organizations, which is um, it it uh, makes a difference on the way that we think. So uh, I was working with a very large NGO that said, "All right, we've got a half million dollar budget. Go for it." And so I spent my partner and I spent two weeks thinking about ideas that would fit well within that half million dollar budget. And then we presented ideas, and wow, we love it. Uh, we're wondering if you can do it for 50k instead, <laughs> which threw away everything that, the, everything that we were trying to do. So I had to t completely start over. Um, there is a lot of difference that can happen between having 5k, 10k, and no k. Uh, so in approaching a creative, it does help to to be able to have some kind of budget. And again, and this does not go to creative time. That you'll find an abundance of people willing to donate time after hours or during hours. Um, but this is for production. So money, money, money. Uh, audience, just uh, specifics. It, it, it's okay if it's this case, but it's often uh, we want it to go to everybody. Um, and if that's really true, that's great. But if not, it's good to have a little more specifics. Timing, of course, and then reference work. This is actually really helpful to go through and find um, what, what pieces really inspire you, whether it's the right tone or whether it's the right thing that they accomplished, the right amount of success. Um, but just searching through uh, databases, coloribus.com is a good one to go through that. The, this uh, database I just showed is a closed network. It's expensive to, to get to it, but um, you can try coloribus.com to search through the most award-winning creative ideas for finding coloribus? coloribus, like color, and then I-B-U-S, I think. Uh, great. And so... Stepping back to relationships, I want to give some examples within each of those relationships. Again, we've got proactive and then planned. And within planned, I want to share three different relationship types like these uh, hermit crabs. So proactive. Boy, all my images are not showing. That's not a good thing. That's great. And I would say one expectation to bring in is uh, the ad industry is, is uh, more used to the process of getting a, a request and then thinking on their own as opposed to getting a big group together to brainstorm together. And from my experience, um, that's, that's been because the bigger the group, at least for maybe like a fragile creative, the less uh, 
risk taking it is, and like in a bad way, the more safe the idea is, and the more safe it is, the less likely it is to have a big draw uh, and a big response from from PR. Uh, so that's one one good thing to go in, in the relationship is to uh, be willing to experiment with letting letting them take it and uh, and then coming back with the ideas. It's great. Um, so the the proactive uh, go back to the the different hermit crab relationships. The, uh, the this is an example of a proactive of idea that uh, just came while I was working on something else, but it could have just been as likely a brief that uh, an organization gave me that uh, said someday we'd love to have an idea like this. That's called Your Name Saves. Uh, I'll just show the case study real quick. So the idea is very simple. I don't know if you can tell on the projection, but it, uh, it almost, I think we found about 70% of names have names within your name that are stuck within it. So my sister's name, Nicole Marie Douglas, has a, a name Ari in it, for example. Uh, so uh, we had that simple idea, and I found the client on LinkedIn and reached out, and, uh, and we made it happen. Uh, that was about, production for that was actually about 10,000. We found a production company in, in uh, Colombia, actually, from a connection we made through to Julia, that, uh, that allowed us to help produce that website. Um, and, and again, all the creative effort and time was put in for free, which is great. Um, Julie mentioned this this project. This is an example of a of a planned agency of an agency planned collaboration. Um, so Julie approached the uh, we we approached it in a more official way, where where uh, it be, the Alliance for Peace Building and Partners Global uh, became uh, became an official client of of the agency, and so we were able to bill actual hours to that, not for uh, not actually billing, but we were actually to we used the time code for it. Um, that process is is good for making a a large strategic, maybe multinational idea, uh, but it does come with a lot of red tape. It's a very slow process to get a, an agency officially on it. And together we made this uh, a brief together, but it was it wasn't an official agency capacity. It was just just us on our side time working with them. Uh, and they could have just as easily reached out to us individually, and we would have been just as excited to to go about it. And so together we created this uh, this uh, visual, which is shoving it in Kim Jong Un's mouth. And I'll I'll play the the whole campaign of how that how that played out. <laughs> There's a new and unconventional effort aimed at undermining the dictatorship in North Korea. Human rights activists are now collecting old USB sticks, which will be smuggled into North Korea, getting content from the modern world into the hands of North Koreans kept in the dark by a repressive regime. In a country where total censorship is used to brainwash its people, outside information is an effective tool to make North Koreans question the government's propaganda and actions. When I saw the movie Titanic, but in this movie, man can die for love. And I think that really gave me some like taste of freedom. Flash drives for freedom is an effort to collect flash drives. The drives are erased, filled with films, books, and Wikipedia, and smuggled into North Korea using drones and other means, then viewed on USB media players owned by most North Koreans. Hi. We encouraged donations with an interactive installation where audio from Kim Jong Un's speech was silenced whenever a USB drive was inserted. While on tour, an odd thing happened. Our installation was stolen, while more expensive items were left untouched. But we built it again, and it continues to travel the world. Drives were also donated by a USB manufacturer every time our hashtag was used. It's a project which looks to expose Millions of hours from the outside world are already in North Korea, turning your flash drive into someone else's freedom. Hmm. Flash freedom. Uh, so the backstory in that 
So we we had about uh, two weeks before we we needed to launch the first thing at uh, South by Southwest in Texas, um, and this was one of the very first ideas that came and and uh, so simple, but we decided to present it anyway, and and they were immediately responsive to it. Uh, I would say another reason why creatives are so excited to work with uh, people like yourselves is that we're used to working with uh, people who are in marketing all their lives and they want to hyper analyze everything and they want to uh, run it through every possible kind of testing because there's all these kind of budgets for all that kind of thing. And so we get uh, burned out on uh, not being able to present our baby and have people excited about it. But, <laughs> but uh, almost every time I've worked with a, with an organization, a nonprofit, it's been, uh, it's like everything is bonus. So it's uh, really exciting. And so when this idea was presented, uh, I think there was maybe one other, but it was, it was like, wow, this is amazing. Let's go do this. And a couple days later, we were already, already like a uh, buying flash drive ports to be able to put it all together. And we made like a really quick and dirty $500 version of it and brought that to South by Southwest. And uh, with that alone, at a, at a trade booth at South by Southwest, uh, in a place where all these companies are spending giant media budgets, uh, USA Today named us, named Obama, NASA, and Flash Drives for Freedom as as uh, the most interesting things at South by Southwest that year. <laughs> but that was made out of foam, and so it was a uh, our foam core. So it was it wasn't really sustainable because they wanted to bring it around all throughout the world. So we created uh, about a eight thousand dollar version of it, uh, where we partnered with a manufacturing company that we work with who could who could uh, donate some of their costs but not all of them and uh, produce that together uh, but like you saw in the video that was stolen and so we had to go back but uh, we were able to reinvent it in a way that was even more effective to move around and, and was twice as big um, and this, the third version was about 7,000 I want to say which is great um, and I don't know if you saw at the end of the video so what was that 500 uh, 8,000 and 7,000 was our total total cost for everything, as, apart from uh, the client end on shipping costs. And with all that, we got, uh, actually this is out of date, we're now over $2 million in uh, earned media, which means the eyeballs that you would have to pay for usually in advertising. Uh, we got that for free through, through exposure. Yeah. So this is the case study. Uh, its primary use is for award shows to recap what was what was made and to uh, help HRF reach out to more philanthropists to show this is what we did. Uh, so the, the actual ad was this traveling art installation. Uh, and so in that case, we, we targeted what, what individuals saw it by uh, what conference we brought it to or what uh, art gallery it showed in. Um, so we haven't, uh, because, uh, that's, that's a good question, because a lot of times we think about what's the, what's the, uh, media strategy that we're going to use to get get this video out so um, like a pay-per-click on Facebook or something whereas with an idea like this there's no media costs because other than chipping this thing around uh, because you're you're able to just have the idea itself be so compelling that people want to write about it and and uh, make videos about it we even had uh, like bars across the country who said all right we'll create this jar and whoever puts one in there we'll give them a free drink we had like a Cub Scouts going door to door doing a, a drive drive. We had preachers pounding the pulpit saying our congregation needs to donate. So it's just, uh, even though human rights is, you could say it's similar to peace building and that it's this really high level thing and it's like, hey, do you want to do human rights? So I don't know what that means. Uh, but uh, with them together, we were able to boil it down into one very small thing that people could say, oh, I know how to do that. I can, I can give a drive. Um, and so... I, I think human rights is similar to, to peace building in that when you do take it down to this level, to a, a campaign level, you can engage people on a very personal and uh, tangible product kind of way that they're able to not only give you the, the thing that you want through that campaign, but join you in, uh, in helping take them up to becoming an actual peace builder in general. They want to produce this nice little video because they get to take it to their award show, right? But then when they do that nice little video, we get to use it for all of the purposes that we want to bring our Absolutely. attention to our work. And you can imagine if the Carter Center is going to have its own campaign and its own thing, and Peace 
strike will have its thing, and, and the ship neck rolls will have its thing. But if we all have copies of each other's little yeah. video, and then that somehow lives somewhere that we were like elevating consciousness and ideas and our message under under one um, either frame, multiple frames, or distribution, or access to each other so we could also demonstrate it. I think we're talking now more and more about elevating. All right, do you mind if we let him keep going? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I, I actually don't have more to go. I would love to continue to, oh, cool. to talk about this. Uh, I, this pro bono? We're, we're not as defensible as you <laughs> say it. They're just, just like every uh, industry outside of peace building, uh, greed fuels. And so you will see a, a cutoff of engagement with your idea after award season, or you'll see an increase as uh, the leading up to award season. Uh, and there are plenty of individuals that, that work in that space, but I, I do feel that there are just as many that uh, do it also for the love of. Uh, wanting to make make a difference, and luckily in advertising that is rewarded just the same. Um, but and then so and then the other piece of that, or actually two other pieces of that one that you mentioned, um, advertising agencies are just as much in the long term game with their clients as they are in the short term, and so uh, with Coca Cola we'll make uh, something like Small World Machines that gets people excited for one month about the good that Coca Cola is doing. But we'll also create open happiness. That's a platform that runs for 10 years and has this idea that's really simple that you can continue to, to play off of. And you almost, it's content that almost writes itself so that to a degree you wouldn't have to have creatives involved with it because the platform accomplishes so much. Uh, one that I always reference is uh, you're not you when you're hungry, Snickers. Uh, dumb idea. But it's just, <laughs> it's just the simplicity of swapping out somebody, usually someone famous, for someone uh, who, is, who is hungry. Uh, and that idea can be manifested in so many different ways. And we've seen it played out since Super Bowl, whatever, 10 years, five years ago, uh, has shown itself in so many different ways. And so I think part of it is approaching the ad agency. Um, like you're saying, Julia, maybe we were feeling like, wow, that's too much to ask to give us something for 10 years, uh, but feeling comfortable saying we want to we want a platform. We have the boots on the ground that can make this platform continue to last. Mm -hmm. And uh, that kind of uh, legacy is beneficial to an ad, ad person as well. Uh, if you're tapping into the, the long term or tapping into that type of uh, incentive. Um, so yeah, approaching creatives as we want to make something that lasts for a long time and what's the first quick thing that goes under that is a, often a way that we present ideas. And then to your point, uh, just real quick before that, the, um, another way to go about it in a long-term way is to marry your organization to a, uh, a client. So Allstate, I don't know if you've ever seen Purple Purse. Yep. It's an initiative that we started with them, which is to help, uh, help domestic women who are in domestic abuse. Um, and it's a... a I can't remember if, I'd, I'm trying to remember if there's an organization involved in that. It could just as easily be an organization that is sponsored, that is a, it's, that all the charity's going toward. But uh, that's something that at least once a year they'll create uh, content for and, and continue to create interest in that. So that's another, another way of creating long-term engagement. Uh, there are many new ways to go about reaching those kind of numbers. So uh, one YouTube video can, you know, uh, uh, James Corden, he makes one video with Adele uh, for essentially free, just putting the dash cam on, and it makes more views than a Super Bowl ad. And so uh, there are new ways, but you have, but everyone is trying it, is in that space. So you, there are ways to hack the Super Bowl and get more interest than Mercedes Benz that spends, you know, ten million on a thirty-second spot. Uh, I don't know if you saw the Newcastle Brown Ale work, but they they did a whole campaign about the amazingly ridiculous expensive ad that they would have made for the Super Bowl. Yes. And they did all this work around it and it was a uh, very uh, subversive getting getting the the eyeballs that that uh, other agencies other Super Bowl ads didn't get because of it. So uh, be actually because there are so many different ways to go about it. It's uh, I mean I'm obviously biased but there are more opportunities to benefit from a relationship with someone in an ad agency who's 
who's able to think in the in non-traditional ways to reach out.